Rick, you spent five years of your life, you know, filming Joe Exotic, gathering this footage for a reality show, but the reality show is not Tiger King. Your footage famously burned down in the studio fire on, on the zoo grounds. What is your gut instinct as to who burned that building? Because it was somebody. You know, Joe Exotic went off. He blamed me. He blamed Carol Baskin. He blamed a, a DJ in Tampa. He blamed anybody and everybody but himself. But the bottom line is, two days before the studio fire, he and I got into an argument over the fact that I had a contract with him to make the reality show. And he was so upset, he made an immediate departure, said, I'm gone from the park for a couple of days. He changed the locks on the studio so I couldn't get in. And the next thing you know, the studio burned. So the FBI has a pretty good idea who did it. How would Tiger King have been different if it was your footage that we saw and not what was gathered by the Netflix crew? Uh, it would have been more violent uh, and probably exposed a lot more things than, than what you saw in the documentary series of Tiger King. Uh, we had footage and Joe knew it. That was what the argument a few nights before the fire was over was. I finally told him, look, I own you right now. And, and he, he got upset and I said, look, if I were to let the video out that I have shot of you killing animals on this park, of you tricking people by taking in their animals, you probably go to jail. And he just went berserk. You know, I think about him and he's, I don't know, how would you describe a megalomaniac, egomaniac, narcissist? I mean, all of them? You were lured in to this surreal world of Joe Exotic. And he acted on camera like he, you know, he ran the whole world. He wasn't scared of anything. He was very scared of the tigers, very afraid. The ones he'd get in the cages with were either blind or they were sedated. Uh, it was all just a facade. It was a big facade. You gave him the ultimate, the ultimate nirvana high, the ultimate euphoria. You built Tiger King by putting him in the throne. It was your idea to wrap him, right? What people don't know is that, and I have the footage, behind that chair was the actual trainer. Those were his tigers. Those were someone else's tigers that they could control. And he was behind there with a gun and had the tigers chained because Joe was terrified to get in cages with tigers. Was the camera Joe's drug? Yeah. It was. Uh, he, we, we had three camera people that would follow him around from the time he got up to the time he went to bed. And this guy would go day and night, I mean, on two or three hours sleep. But he was also doing the meth to keep him going at the time. So Joe was a drug addict, too. He did meth, too. Joe is a surreal, one-of-a-kind figure, a very, very evil guy at heart, but also very lost. And I think that's why you almost feel sorry for him in the documentary series at some point. But believe me, there's nothing there to feel sorry about. He was a very evil guy to the animals and to the people that worked for him. Is he capable of murder? It, you know, he's in there 22 years because of murder for hire, paying a guy 3,000 bucks to go kill his arch nemesis, Carol Baskin. Right. Do you, I mean, always spoke about it, but, you know, you assume most of it was hot air. Do you think Joe actually gave the 3,000 and fully intended for her to be killed? Billy, I could tell you that Joe approached me on numerous occasions, telling me he'd make a rich man out of me if I'd go down to Tampa and take care of Carol. Do I think he's capable? 110%. Thank you for watching. If you want more extra, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video.